Hello, my name is Mariana, and today this is a reading for Libra. So, Libra, as usual, I'm doing this reading with my own tarot deck, so the cards that you'll see are from this deck. I apologize for the weird uh, echoey sound. Uh, this room is now empty, so I hope it doesn't bother you that much. So, let's jump into your message because um, I'm seeing you, Libra, in a very... Um, in a very focused way, it's like you're minding your own business, you're just taking the steps as you see fit or as you are able to perceive where these, ste these steps are taking you. And it feels like you, even though it's not the main focus, it's this outcome that makes you see that the steps that you're taking, even though you cannot see much further down the line or have more information about what's to come it's like you know that this is bringing you this uh sense of growth and growth in love but there is this watcher there is this one here that the, there is um there is something very um mischievous or um deceitful or at least um self-interested in this person that is observing you i don't feel like you're much aware of them if there is some sort of connection between you and them it feels very briefly uh they're brief it feels something um very momentarily right it's like this um momentarily connection bumping into one another but i do feel like this other it's like they they have been observing your steps. They have been uh, watching you take those steps forward and they consider you kind of like an easy prey of some sort. It's like there is something that they are interested in um, uh, kind of convincing you to work with them. But it's almost like you're, you're a little bit oblivious and it's almost like this innocence in you because you're showing up here as the page of wands not the page of wands the page of pentacles um they're showing as the knight of wands um so maybe that's the thing right um because they're coming later on here and it's, they are coming from the wand suit it's almost like they they see you as a perfect match they see you as a perfect um collaborator partner but before that, before they even show up, at least in your awareness, at least in your perception field, um, you're just minding your own business. What I heard from this card uh, beginning your reading today, Libra, is um, start small, grow tall. And actually, this is a phrase that I heard um, in a song, one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite artists, uh, Rue Paines. I think I mentioned him a while ago. Uh, in a few readings actually but it's been a while that i've mentioned him um and so today it came up in this reading right with the very first card so the end of this song called uh, little giant um there is this phrase that he repeats right over and over and over again it's like start small grow tall and it's almost like here in this page of pentacles vibe you're still not worried about the growth part even though it's kind of like this um this natural outcome but in a way you're just um you're just focused it's almost like you have this special toy you have this special thing right this object this new opportunity this new path that you're just um, starting to work with it that you're just starting to investigate it it's more like this hands-on type of investigation right it's not like this very mental um thorough type of investigation it's more like this hands-on type of approach almost like a kid right you know children they just learn and they evolve and they grow very fast because they have this very experiential type of learning process and i feel like this is where you are right now libra even though the the saying went um start small grow tall I do feel like um, you're not worried about the growth. The growth is actually just like this, um, this outcome that is eventually going to come because the Two of Swords coming next is showing me that you're just 
concerned or you're just seeing what's just up ahead, right? It's like, what is the next step? Because to me, the twos, they represent the, the steps forward and being the two of swords, it's like, you're not really focused in what is in the future. You're actually focused in the now, right? It's like, what is this object that I have in my hands right now? What is this new thing that has just arrived and that feels so valuable, so precious, so um, interesting, right? So it's almost like the future is no longer that interesting. So you're just concerned about this next step because it's like, it's also about kind of like a, that Knight of Pentacles type of um, behavior or approach to life, right? It's like stopping to smell the flowers. It's like, here you are, but it's almost like you're just um, a little bit, uh, not behind, but it's like you, it's like you need to take more steps to even feel like there is some sort of progress going on or some sort of growth going on. Because as I'm saying this, it's like you're, Okay, it's almost like you can scratch the growing part that's going to come naturally and actually is going to come with the Three of Cups, which is this uh, growth with love, growth upon love, growth because of love, with love, right? So the Threes to me, they talk about co-creation, this co-creation from the heart specifically. So that's the part of your growth, Libra, that you're not... It's like you're not even thinking about it just happens naturally and it feels like it happens because you are it's like you you have deliberately put like this blindfold on to stop focusing on the future and focus on this one thing that you have at your hands right now so it's almost like there is something that is so valuable in the now in this present moment that it's like you, you cannot see that further down the line that you would, you know, place this value in the future. The value is in the now. And so what it creates as this outcome is this, um, is this dynamic force field of co-creation, right? Based on love. So you are in a sense growing, but it's this natural growth that happens because your heart is so present, right? And it's fascinating also because even though the threes, they do represent the co-creation, meaning it's you and somebody else or you and the universe, you and your higher self, I'm not seeing others. And it's almost like you are emitting this um, resonance or this, um, it's almost like the smell, right? It's like you're emitting this smell that you're not even privy to because I do feel like you are, it's almost like you're not, you're so focused in the now, Libra, that you're not aware that this natural process of growth, it's actually, it's almost like, you know, the flowers blooming. They do have that beautiful smell, right? That scent of a flower, the perfume. But it's not something that the flower does on purpose. It's just part of the natural growth, the natural blooming. So this is almost like your natural blooming. You are, it's almost like you're exhaling this beautiful perfume that attracts potential co-creators. But the first one that smells that or that um, hears that sound or, you know, uh, feels the heart resonance and wants to co-create with you is somebody that is very inspired by your innocence, right? I say that um, the pages, they do carry this innocence, right? This very, um, not naive necessarily, but just open, right? This open heart, this open mind, this open body and life, right? It's like everything is open for the page to learn. And so this Knight of Wands is looking at you, Libra, and they are smelling that scent. They are receiving that signal of co-creation that because you're not focused in your own growth, you're not aware that this is what is being sent out. Right, but this one picks up because maybe they have a little bit more experience or they are indeed searching for a partner, 
right? And it's not a romantic partner, I don't feel like. It feels like um, somebody to co-create something, even though what you are sending out is this co-creation from the heart. It's almost like they they misinterpret that. It's like they see you as an easy prey because you're sending this signal of co-creation, like being open to co-create, but you are sending out this message of co-creation from the heart space. They are interpreting that as uh, co-creation in the material level, right? It's almost like they see this as incredibly inspiring, right? It's like is just igniting their own creativity. And I do feel like for some reason, even before I, uh, I saw the other three cards, um, I saw this one as like thirsty for creative impulses or new inspirations. And it feels like you are just ticking all the boxes, right? But you're not aware that you are ticking all the boxes in this one's search, right? So it's kind of like you, you are the manifestation that they were looking for in somebody to co-create, especially because they see how you value the present moment. And actually this is what they were looking for, right? They want to, uh, because we're ending here with the eight of pentacles, just that connection, but they are misinterpreting the three, the signal that you're sending for co-creation, right? Because they are inspired by how you're so focused in the, in the now and how you're not concerned about the future. But the interesting thing is that I feel like they're the opposite. It's like they're very future focused. They're very uh, driven by this future vision. They have the world card and, you know, this image came to me uh, and I think it's the first time that I'm seeing this image with the world card. I saw this as um, a keychain, right? Or a, how do you call it? Is it a keychain? It's like a, a something to hold the keys, right? So it had like this uh, globe, right? It's like this miniature of the globe. Um, so in this keychain, and it's almost like they are holding this. They have been holding this totem, this object, this um, almost like a vision, right? It's like they have been holding like a vision for the world, but they have been in search for somebody to uh, make it real or um, materialize, manifest this vision for them because it's almost like they are the creative ones, right? They're not the one who is going to um, execute the idea. They're just the, um, it's like they, they are good at brainstorming. They're really good at bringing new ideas or you know creating things from scratch but they have such a big vision that it's almost like they need somebody to co-create this with, right? And when they bump into your signal of co-creation, it's almost like they're immediately attracted to you, right? And it's almost like you're, again, just minding your own business, right? You have no idea of this entire global vision of like that is coming with them, right? It's almost like you, it's almost like it feels interesting to you at first because it's almost like they have this thing in their hand, right? Which feels a little bit bigger than yours, right? Yours, it feels um, almost like a, a small stone or a crystal or whatever you have in your hand. Um, it's like there is a little bit of this resonance in the beginning, right? Because you don't know kind of like the meaning behind this keychain that they have. Right, it's almost like this global vision that they're bringing, and that they're bringing not just like it's not a random meeting, right? They are intentionally wanting to exchange notes because they are trying to convince you to come with them to manifest this vision, right? Because so, in a way, because you're so innocent, let me just finish that thought. It's like because you're so innocent, and this is such a new thing that you're so interested in just diving into this present moment and seeing what this is, right? It's almost like when you bump into somebody that has something in their hand, no matter how big or small, or in this case, you know, this global type of totem, it's like, 
there's something that it feels like this initial connection, right? But as I said, it's like this brief encounter because the more that you are in their company, it's almost like the more you get to know their true intentions or their true desire, right? Because the Ten of Swords is coming next. And what I'm seeing here, remember that you had the Two of Swords. So you're taking these steps by yourself. You're not, it's almost like they want to mentor you, right? Because it's almost like they're saying, listen, you're, you're going down this lane that you don't see up ahead what is coming, right? It's like, it's almost like you don't see the dangers that are out there and I can help you. I can protect you from those dangers, those threats, however they are using, you know, to describe this. But I do feel like they are, um, in a way, also, it's not just, um, this signal, right, to co-create that you're sending out that they're resonating with. It's almost like they see you as an easy prey because it's almost like they have taken similar steps. And I want to say because the Ten of Swords is the shared path, right? But a shared path that didn't go exactly the way that this knight was envisioning, right? It's like it was almost like this deception of a vision that they had for the world or for their, themselves or like their contribution to the world, right? So that's the reason why they are, it's almost like they have um, been let down by the last person that was potentially this co-creator with them. So now that this went down uh, uh, a way that it was not satisfactory for this one, it's like they're in search for somebody that could take those same steps and it's almost like they're saying to you their first argument or not argument, like their first um, um, way to convince you, right? The first thing that they say is that there are dangers out there, right? That the world is very, very big, that you're just starting out on this path, that you're not seeing much of what's up ahead, that you're too exposed, that you're too vulnerable, right? To the dangers of the world, let's say. And it's almost like they're coming and saying, listen, I have more experience and I'm so fascinated by how you just are doing what you're doing, right? That I am proposing to not only be your guardian, right? Or be your mentor or um, kind of like protect you along those steps, right? It's like, because I've seen it, because I know what you can do when these things happen, but then, Again, it's almost like the more they um, reveal to you their true intentions, it's like the more you understand why they are approaching you. It's not just because you're both holding something that, you know, brings this, um, this resonance, right? Or this um, kind of like this familiarity, right? Or like just going through the same stage in life, right? It's like the the first, it's like the first initial coincidence, let's call it that way. It's something that makes them approach you. It's something that makes you stop and just hear them out. But the more they explain themselves or the more they um, just tell you about their own path and their interest in approaching you because the Eight of Pentacles is ending here, right? And to me, the eights, they do represent the two fives that are overlapped. It's almost like they are telling you the story that didn't work out with their last partner, their last business partner, their, their last um, companion, right? In this road to manifest this grand vision to the world, uh, for the world, right? So they have this desire that hasn't been fulfilled, I want to say. So that's the reason why they are still searching out. And the moment that they bump into you, Libra, it's almost like they see you as the perfect character, the perfect uh, prey, right? Maybe the easy prey to fulfill this. And they are trying to gain your confidence or gain your trust by pointing out the similarities, right? So if you came with a page of pentacles, it's like they're saying, listen, what I have to offer is a lot of expertise in 
just multiplying what you have already figured out that is very valuable, but you have only one pentacle. I have eight pentacles. I have more experience. I have more know-how. So I know how to, to how to um, make this grow, right? Make this um, um, just have even more value than it has right now for you. But as I said, every single explanation that they're giving, it's almost like it's future focused. And since you're not focusing in that, it's almost like, because it's interesting, it's like you're so focused in the present, right? You're not interested in looking forward because it's almost like you don't have any vision of the future anyway. So why would you, you know, waste your time with that? And in another, uh, in another hand, it's like they, they have, it's almost like they have just experienced maybe this recent um, deceitful moment or this breakup or this betrayal perhaps um, with their last business partner or collaborator or you know co-creator that they don't want to carry this burden for the future right so it's almost like they they are instigated by you libra because they cannot seem to be in the present either they are in the past or they are in the future right it's almost like this future vision and how this is so promising for the future right so even though they see similarities and they want to make you see them too, right? With the swords and the pentacles, it's almost like they are saying, listen, I can protect you from these wobbly, very, um, what is the word? Like insecure or unstable steps forward. And I also can, you know, make your, uh, make your, just make you, what is the word? Um, like just increase your value, right? Maybe they're saying like, I can turn you into like this, you know, very profitable, um, influencer or person, or, you know, it's, it's kind of like getting this, taking this, small idea that you're just starting to work with and turn it into a business, a profitable business, something like that, right? So they're trying to make you see that entering this business partner or, or this uh, partnership or this uh, collaboration with them would be something valuable for you as well. But they're completely missing the point because Again, it's like they're just misinterpreting this, right? They're not seeing the true essence, which is the natural growth that you're going through. So you're not interested in the growth per se, neither, you know, in a very personal level or in a pentacle level, right? Um, you're just focusing in the next steps. So because they don't get the real understanding of this co-creation, they just get the first signal and they rush to you to just, uh, it's like they don't want to miss this opportunity. So they are going all in, right? Maybe because they don't have anything to lose, right? So their only chance to just, you know, propose you something, right? Propose you like this business deal. But it's also like, um, it's like their timing is off, right? You are focused in the present. They're either focused in the past or the future. And it doesn't blend with you, especially because it's almost like they, the bottom of the deck is the five of wands. And it's almost like they are inspired by you, Libra, exactly because they want to be more in the present, but they are in conflict about this, right? The fives to me, they do symbolize like just presence, right? Being where you are like in, um, entirely, right? This integrity, this self-integrity. But it's almost like they, they, they cannot stay here for long, right? And they want to find a partner that could um, add to this future vision or this past knowledge that they carry, right? And you are offering that in a sense, but it's, there is a mismatch, even though they're trying to convince you that, they, that you're both a perfect match. So yeah, let's see. I don't feel like it's like you're going to stay there listening to them just talk and talk and talk. It's like because it takes you from the present moment, right? So Libra, this is interesting. I wonder where this will go next. 
So I am going to pull more cards for you as well as the astrological runes in the extended reading. So if you want to join me there, I'll be very happy to see you. You can find the link down below. If not, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.